All right, guys, we made it to the key part of this series where I'm actually going to load up some ammunition. I've got four of my powders laid out on my bench. I've also gone through a bunch of load data, and I've written down what all the manufacturers suggest from their minimum to maximum charge. And then I've picked three charges for each of the powders. So I'm, so I'm going to have a total of 12 groups that I'm going to shoot, and they're going to be four shot groups. The Tika only has a three round magazine in it, and so I'm going to run four rounds through it. It's good enough to get a group. Um, so we're going to do that with each of the powders, three charges in each powder. Our powders we're using are Hybrid 100V, H4350, IMR7828 SSC, and H4831 SC. So those are our powders lined up. These should be pretty well set up for this weight bullet in the 243 Winchester. There is load data out there for like Reloader 15 and Varget, which I have. But at this point, I don't think that it's, uh, those aren't the ideal powders for this bullet. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip over those and just go with these four. I think this will provide plenty of data and, it sh and I'm gonna shoot all of these over the chronograph. Hopefully I'll get good readings throughout the day and we're gonna shoot them all for groups and we'll do a target review at the end of this. So as far as brass prep is concerned, I'm actually going to make a series of videos on very detailed brass prep for 6.5 Creedmoor instead of the 243 Winchester. Uh, at this point, I think that's more relevant information. Uh, I think more people will probably end up coming across those videos and kind of wanting to know how to reload for their new 6.5 Creedmoor. But the brass prep all translates perfectly. It's the same process I do from 223 to 243 to 6.5 Creedmoor and the new 7mm WSM that I'm building. So. That's what the plan is. We're gonna do brass prep in a separate series, which means we're gonna jump right into reloading in this series. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna load up some rounds. I'm just gonna show you the process of one powder, throwing all the charges, getting them all weighed out, and then uh, should be ready to rock and roll. So stick with us. I'm gonna teach you guys how to load up a range of powder charges for our 243 Winchester, and then we're gonna go out and shoot them in a separate video. So stay tuned, let's get to it. Well, all right guys, so the way I do this is I get my brass arranged in a tray. I'm gonna do three separate charges of four shot groups. So I do three rows of four pieces of brass. Pretty simple, pretty simple. Then uh, first thing we're going to do is prime the brass and I prime off of the press. So I've gotta get that set up with just a small priming arm and then a uh, shell holder. Not a big deal there at all. And then we're gonna go ahead and start priming. Okay, now what I mean by prime off the press. So I've got my shell holder here and the way these Lee are set up, they have a little hole on the bottom of them. And then I have this little priming arm right here. And basically what this does, this little cup holds the primer. And then as you push down on the press, it is forced up through the shell holder. And this sleeve springs back, which pushes a primer into the primer pocket of the brass. So check this out, it's really simple. Uh, it's a good effective way. It's not very fast. It's not the greatest system in the world, but you know what, it came with the press and uh, that's how I've always done it, and I don't mind doing it at all. There we go, I dumped out a couple primers here on the bench. Uh, I try not to get my fingers down in the actual like uh, priming agent itself. I always try and touch the metal part of a primer. Okay, now we've got our primers organized right here. Now they're ready to go into the press. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my first one. This primer arm sticks out the side. Drop my primer down into the edge of the cup right there. Grab the piece of brass. Go ahead and push the press down, the arm up, which forces the primer into the brass right there. So then I always run my finger across the head of the case like that, and it's just a feel, and make sure that the primer sits below the head of the case. Um, that's pretty important for semi-automatic firearms, so that way you don't get slam fires. And it doesn't require a crazy amount of pressure. You don't need to really force it or use like the top of the lever and really slam it in there. But uh, it's a good snug fit. They should slide in pretty smooth. That one definitely went up flush with it. And then you just keep on trucking. Priming's pretty simple, especially with a simple setup like this. All right guys, so the, what this method is called is called ladder testing. That's just the style of this reloading and uh, load development. So the way that I do my different ladder loads, 
which basically just means a bunch of the same charges and then increase a bunch of the same charges, increase and a bunch of the same charges. So the way I do this is I fill up my Lee Perfect powder measure here, which has an adjustable arm over here, which you can adjust how much powder flows into it, and then it will drop a consistent amount of powder. It's go, it goes by volume. So I fill this thing up top, got my Hybrid 100V here, and I'm going to get this to throw a consistent charge just under the weight that I actually want to throw. The idea being so I can trickle it up on my scale and get uh, super consistent loads. I want to make sure that these are the exact charge weights in each set of brass that I'm going for. That way I get the most consistent results and hopefully get the, the most accurate information out of this. The more accurate I can get my powder charges, the better it's going to represent what that powder charge would shoot. Simple enough. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing tuned up and then I'm going to get my trickler here, which is this little guy right here. You just fill up, fill up the top with powder and then as you rotate the arm, there's a hole in here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a hole in this little brass arm and as you twist it, it picks up powder and it starts dispensing it out of the end. Pretty slow, it just drops a couple kernels at a time and uh, I just drop a few grains onto the scale at a time. All right guys, I've got my powder thrower throwing consistent charges just under my target weight. And uh, at this point, I've trickled up to the 40 grains that I'm going to use on the first charge of the ladder test for the Hybrid 100V. So we're gonna go 40 grains, 41 grains, and 42 grains. That's all within a few of the manufacturer's load data that they provide. This is a safe charge within all of that published data. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So pretty simple, just drop it on in there. You don't necessarily wanna just dump all of it in at once. You kinda of wanna let it, kinda of wanna slowly feed it in here because this is uh, pretty much super tapered. And if you dump too much in, it'll kinda of clog up at the neck. So as soon as you're done filling it up, I always click mine to help the powder settle in and any of it that got stuck on the mouth of the case, it helps it fall in. And then I immediately move to the next case. Now with these types of powders on this rifle cartridge, you can't really get a double charge. It's gonna fill it up almost to the shoulder. That's a good case fill. But if you put two charges in it, you're going to ruin what the first charge was and then it's going to overflow and make a mess all over everything. So you wanna keep track of which one you're filling up also, you want to keep track of which ones you have set at which charge because we're changing charges as we go. So you got to keep track of where they're at. So simple enough. I always lift my arm and click twice and then throw down and click twice. Now you don't have to necessarily click twice. You can just throw it up and throw it down, but you want to throw your charges consistently, whatever you do. So that one was 40 grains right on the money. We're going to go ahead and slowly dump this into our shell, click it, take a look in there, make sure it's good, move on to the next piece and throw my next charge. So that's all there is to loading up the ladder charges and then when I get to the next charge I'm just going to adjust my powder thrower up basically one full rotation on the tube. One rotation on this particular one with this type of powder seems to get me about a grain increase. This one through again, right on the money, 40 grains. So you've heard, you've probably read through some of the uh, powder manufacturers information that says it meters well. What they mean is a powder thrower like this. Uh, if it meters well, it's going to give you consistent weights and it'll be a smooth throw. Some of the powders with the longer sticks will actually get a little bit caught up inside of the mechanism as it moves back and forth. 4831, in fact, uh, has a big issue with this and not only does it kind of catch as I move it back and forth, this is 4831, not only does it catch as it moves back and forth, but it will kind of get stuck up in that upper tube, and so I'll have to really click it down a couple times to get it to shake loose. So something to be aware of with that powder. But back to the Hybrid 100V, I'm just gonna triple a couple grains and tap my scale to make sure it's tracking correctly. And it's back to 40 grains, so. Let's go ahead and throw this. This is the last charge of the 40 grains. If you're only loading up three or four rounds, it goes pretty quick. So now we need to increase back here. 
I'll go about three quarters of a turn. Go ahead and make sure my scale is zeroed. Yep, that's all good. Click, click. And I tap on my powder a little bit to kind of get it evenly settled down in the pan. That way it evenly distributes the weight across the scale. And bam, perfect, 41 grains. Uh, I got pretty lucky on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the case. And that's all there is to this. I mean, it's real simple. You just fill up your pan, weigh it, make sure it's exactly where you need it to be, trickle it up if necessary. You usually want this thrown just a little bit light, uh, getting as close as you can pretty much. I'm throwing them right on, which uh, this powder it works well for. Some powders, as you throw them, uh, they won't throw perfectly even. Sometimes it's 40 grains, sometimes it's 40.2 or 39.8, and it varies just a little bit, so something to be aware of, like right here it threw just a little bit more powder than it normally does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that back into the powder thrower and then maybe a little bit lighter click on that upstroke right there. Something else to be aware of uh, with your scales, be aware of if your AC is on in your house or your heater or if you're in a garage, uh, you definitely don't want like a breeze rolling through. It's gonna mess with your readings and uh, you're looking for the utmost accuracy you can get even if you're leaning forward and breathing on your scale, that could cause an issue as well. So just things to keep in mind, things to be aware of. And with these little cheap digital scales, I kind of got to tap it a few times so I can get a consistent reading right here. Yeah, it's up to 41 grains, so I trust that. See, now I had made a big mistake here. I didn't move my funnel after I threw that charge. I almost just threw two charges into one, which makes a mess and wastes your time, so. Always a good thing to check. And also, after I'm done filling up all these pieces of brass, I'll visually inspect and make sure that there is a powder charge in every one. This is a very important step. Do not skip that. I've actually done that and found one that I didn't throw a powder charge into, which would have caused me a bad time at the range. So, something to be aware of. But I think I'm going to fill up the rest of these cases. I won't bore you with any more of it. And then we're going to move on to seeding bullets. All right guys, got all of our powder charges set up. Uh, you gotta keep track of which ones are which charges that you have. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this in here. Grab a bullet. Now I've set up the seating die to where it comes in contact with the ram at the top. And then I backed off the ram, screwed this in a quarter turn more. And basically this is like a chamber on the inside of this seating die. And so that helps center the brass, and then that will help your bullet be seated down centered. And uh, the seating die is backed out a ways out, so it's not going to seat it very far. Now as we pull it out, we can see that it's seated way too long. So we're going to go ahead and check our overall length, and then we're going to check the manual and see what this bullet should be seated to. So this is 2.828. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw that back in here. We'll check the overall length we're going for, and then we will adjust the top of the die accordingly. All right, the overall length we're going for is 2.650, and we are at 2.820. So I've actually marked on the top of my dies in three points with little Sharpie dots, so I can keep track of like how much of a rotation I've put into that. So right there, that's about a quarter turn. Right there, that's about a quarter turn. So we've gone in a half turn, which still won't put us anywhere near it. So let's go ahead and remeasure it. And this is what you do. You just barely move the seating die. Now we're at 2.789. Let's go a full rotation. And you know what, let's just go two full rotations. So then seat that down in there, pull it out and take a look at it. Now it's looking like it's a lot closer to where we're going for. 2.677. Again, we're going for 2.650. So let's go a quarter turn. And this is where we're just gonna slowly, incrementally work our way to that overall length. 2.660. So now we're very close. We'll do about an eighth of a turn. And then gently, raise it to where you feel it come in contact with the die and then add pressure to where you feel it bottom out. You can give a lot of pressure at the bottom. You don't want to just slam it up in there though. You want to wait till it comes in contact, then slowly apply pressure until it reaches the bottom and then give it a good firm press. So let's pull this out again. 
2.650. So now these have a lead tipped bullet. Let's get my lighting better here. So the tip of this bullet is not perfectly flat, not perfectly round. And so this may give you a few thousandths variation in your measurements, but that's all right. Uh, we don't need them to be perfect. Uh, we don't need them to be absolutely perfect to the tip. What we're looking for is just a uniform seating depth to the O-drive of the bullet. Now they make tools that read the measurement to the O-drive of the bullet. However, I don't have one for the six millimeter. I've got one for seven millimeter and 6.5 millimeter but not for my six millimeter. So 2.656. Let's go ahead and move this die in just a touch more. Run it back up in the die and seat it. Now on this next bullet, I'm gonna show you what is recommended. As you seat your bullet, just slowly come up until you feel it come in contact right there. And then we apply pressure, give it a firm press at the bottom, lift it out, rotate it one half turn, push it back up into the die, give it another firm press. And the idea here is if your bullet seating die isn't perfectly centering the bullet, if you rotate it around, it will kind of help even it back out. So it reduces run out, which is basically your bullet not being perfectly centered in the mouth of the case and uh, these should shoot just slightly more accurately if you can get your bullets straight in there. So let's take a measurement here, 2.641. With the soft lead Spitzer boat tails that uh, Sierra's making here, they're going to vary. That's just how it is. So that's how the seating process goes. We're gonna keep the seam, we're gonna keep the same seating depth across all these charges. None of these will be compressed, so I don't have to worry about the uh, bullet getting pushed up by the powder. None of these are going to grow, and all of them will have a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah, that's got plenty of airspace in there. And uh, as we go up and charge, naturally it's going to fill up the extra airspace. So that's how I seat my bullets. In a second, I'm going to jump back after I've seated all these bullets, and uh, we will talk about labeling them. Well, all right, guys. So one thing you can do here, you can take one of the little stickers that the different ammunition companies give you in their little boxes and you can fill that out and write down all your information. What I do is I just take a Sharpie and write on each case exactly what they are. That way if my box tips over, which it's done before, uh, I can actually sort them back out and figure out what they are. Also I'm going to be dealing with four different powders and three different charges of each powder. So I'm just going to come up with a quick code for each powder. So this one happens to be hybrid 100V. It's the only one with a V in the name. So I'm just gonna write the charge weight and V after it. So right here is going to be 40, 41, and 42V. Simple enough, I can take a look at the cartridge case and know exactly which brass I put this in. These are all going to be loaded into Hornady brass. This has all been twice fired. And these happen to be neck sized brass only. Um, that's a topic for another video but the brass that i'm running right here is next sized only pre-fired in my tika that's sitting right back here so i know that it's going to fit the chamber perfectly and uh, i don't have to worry about any of that so yep that's all we got to do here these are 40 grains so i just write four zero v and that's exactly what i'm going to write on all of these cases and i'm just going to burn through them and that's all there is to it well, all right, I appreciate you guys sticking with me to this point. Um, at this point, I'm not gonna bore you with all the other powders. I'm just gonna load those up on my own time, go a little bit faster and just watch some YouTube gun channel videos while I do it. Hey, there's a thought. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna reload, get all the powders loaded up. Next time you guys will see a video in this series, I will have gone out and we will be shooting them. And then we're gonna come back and talk about targets and velocities, standard deviations, extreme threads, all of that fun stuff. We're gonna see how all four of these powders compare with the Sierra 100 grain Game King in the 243 Winchester, shooting it out of my Tika T3X Lite in 243 Winchester, and it's a stainless barrel. It's the factory Tika barreled action. Once this series is over, I'm very excited for the next phase of the Tika, and I'm gonna be tearing the barrel off. But if you're only interested in 243, I'm sorry, but it's going to turn into a seven millimeter WSM because what I do is shoot long range, 
and the 7mm WSM is superior to the 243 in that regard, especially with a tighter twist barrel, and uh, it's going to be a real awesome rig. That's beside the point. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you all following along and commenting and drop any questions that you might have about any of my process I've got going on here. I will talk to you guys later, and we'll see you in the next video.